you know, a big thing you preach are key loggers, right? And the importance of having a hardware wallet mm -hmm. um, to uh, avoid getting key logged. So, a uh, funny story for you. Uh, so, I got hacked um, okay. a couple months back. It's one of the top tweets on my page. Um, I had a stream with RH Max to describe what happened. But yeah, it was about mm -hmm. um, a 65 grand loss. Um, oh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, on my like hot MetaMask, which had like hex stakes and stuff. So I think since I've gone on and kind of told my story in the hex community, um, I always kind of bring you up and describe, you know, um, the importance of key loggers and hardware wallets. But I go a step further and, and describe to them why the key logger is such an issue. Um, and I felt like mm -hmm. that could you can kind of build on that in your speeches as well, because because a, a key logger is a little abstract. You know, when you just kind of tell a regular hexagon that they should be weary of, you know, inputting their passwords and seeds into a keyboard. The way I got hacked is mm -hmm. a combination of a key logger and like a rat, right? Like a remote administrator. Um, it mm -hmm. was binded with a torrent I downloaded. And uh, when I ran the executable file, not only did it, you know, um, run a key logger in the background, but it also had a rat that let the hacker take remote control once he had the password and actually drain the hot wallet mm -hmm. uh, through my machine. Um, so, yep. yeah, so just anyone listening and I guess Papa for future reference, um, yeah, the, 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 the concern with key loggers is it's often used in combination with a rat. So they'll kind of, uh, watch in the background to see uh, until you've inputted your MetaMask password, um, or your seed. Right. And then, um, if it's just your MetaMask password, they'll just kind of use their rat to see when you're away from your computer, you know, either via the webcam or just kind of the activity. And then they'll, they can like, um, you know, uh, uh, like virtually send you like a, a file they can run to take over your machine or within their virus, they can uh, have like remote um, access as well. And that's how they can drain it. So <clears throat> yeah, it's, uh, it, it's very scary. Um, it can really happen to anybody. You know, th that's, th that's actually more work than what it takes nowadays for the Mars dealer to work. You're familiar with the Mars dealer? No. Okay. So, so a, about a year and a half ago, uh, a little piece of code came on the scene, nice nefarious little wormy uh, called the Mars Dealer. And what happens is through an infected site, um, you get the Mars Dealer infected on your machine and it can actually run, it can, it, it can infect sites uh, uh, by the hundreds in one, in one run for free now. It used to be about $130 on the dark web, but now it's free in the wild and various Various other, you know, uh, morphed changes to it, little minor changes to it, but basically it's the same thing. Mars Dealer right now uh, waits on your system. It knows exactly where the key store file is from your MetaMask and 50 other hot wallets yeah. because it's pretty predictable. They're always named the same thing for every installation of every instance, wherever you are in the world. Um, and then it waits for you to input your password. Your password just happens to be the password to decrypt the file on which your seeds are stored locally. And what it does is it collects those two pieces of information and then it phones home. It I doesn't see. even do any yeah. other key logging. It only waits for your password for the soft wallet. Then it connects them up, covers its tracks, away it goes, and it owns your it owns your goodie bag. That's it. You know, I felt like one thing that could have prevented my hack and, and maybe it, it could apply in the scenario you just described is two-factor authentication. Um, I felt like if I, if MetaMask, you know, had a input of multi like MFA, it could have prevented it. Do you think two-factor could have could have avoided that situation? Um, yeah, but that, but okay. So MetaMask already uh, faces. Well, MetaMask has become become arguably complacent as as far as also the the other soft wallets, mm -hmm. right? They almost always generate a twelve-word C. They almost always have a seed store file local on the machine. They almost all implement the same type of encryption. They almost all are decryptable through the password. And then the idea is that uh, you're talking about. Uh, an island unto itself that won't work compatibility and and patches and changes that will play nicely with your browser and then your hardware wallet manufacturer. They're actually one of the best, um, but they're still shit. So what you're asking for is for another third party to get get to get engaged in terms of like what and uh, a third party authentication like like what Google Authenticator or 
authy yeah. or something like that or a reputable one yeah would be good but your hardware wallet already does that your hardware wallet can actually already accomplish all that 2fa if you've got a ledger now ledgers kind of fall from fallen from grace but effectively the buttons you're pushing already conquer that 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 that, that hill right so i wouldn't I wouldn't need any 2FA if I've got a hardware wallet. Yeah, and just in my case, a legacy, you know, hot wallet got into hacks when I you know, didn't understand the importance of one. So right. now I'm stuck. What we recommend, well, what we recommend, and if you're still sitting there with your, well, it, it, have, has everything been drained and have all your stakes been unstaked and taken away or what's the status? Uh, yeah, I mean, um, I worked with somebody in the Hex security group to confirm there was no yep. uh, flash bots on it. Okay. But yeah, uh, that particular wallet, uh, they yeah, they drained everything liquid. They didn't get to the stakes, but that particular wallet didn't have much stakes. Uh, I've, t- I've taken the stakes since. I have a harder wallet. It's okay. just that at that time, I was moving funds around and just for convenience's yeah. sake, you know, kept the hot right. wallet. So, so my message. Well, I mean, yeah, just to finish off and, and to hand off the mic. Sure. My message to the hexkins and Pulsikins is, you know, take it from someone who's very like computer computer literate, um, works for a tech company, uh, you know, has two FA on everything else, has two treasures, and still, um, you know, there's blind spots, and uh, you may try to value, you know, the accessibility to your hot wallet in some cases but it's always best to be extra safe and just utilize hardware wallets exclusively to avoid any hacks and the hacks come quickly and the draining is very very quick <laughs> in my case it was right in front of my eyes um and uh, it was over oh. before i knew it so be, be careful you don't want to go through with this but also if you're if you've been in crypto for i've been for seven years it's it's also kind of you know bound to happen so um <laughs> But yeah, don't want to wish it on anyone. Yeah, I, I, I think that that's that's a that's an interesting interesting position, but I think by by you conveying your story to the people that are listening here and 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 they pass it on, I think you're doing them a tremendous service by explaining to them what happened and how serious it can be. I don't think that there's any shortage of these types of problems with the people are facing. Rinsing is happening. I mean, my inbox is chock full of people on a daily basis now saying, I think I've been hacked. And turns out, of course, just like you, they were using a hardware, they weren't using a hardware wallet or they were giving, uh, you know, allowances to bad front ends. And yeah, I mean, I don't think it's inevitable. I think that with education and spreading the word, you can save hundreds of people from, from your sad story. It should resonate and get people to take you know, hardware wallets very seriously. So thank you for your, your testimony. I'm very sorry that you, you lost that much cabbage, though. Yeah. Especially at the bottom. <laughs> but uh, luckily, Arsh Max yeah. had me on. If there's any uh, hosts like Maddie that you come across and you guys do a security stream, I'd, I'd be more than happy to help on and uh, share my experience. Yeah, there's no other hexagons really talking about it or sharing it. And well, that's it could cool. be a lesson for others in our community. No, no, I, I, lo- I love it. And, and if only we had a platform that was security-centric yeah. and was easy to uh, to see everything in one single pane of glass. And I- I'll be talking about that in just a moment. Uh, I mean, as soon, as soon as things kick off. And I even see a couple people that are, that are involved in what I'm doing. Talking about right now is very important on when adopting, making sure they stay secured from the inception of them coming into this space uh will help and push in a long way so um you know we could start there um where we adopt and make sure we let people know about you know security and how to keep their their assets secure and um smart contract risks counterparty risks um you know scammers that keylogger um every small detail matters within the space so uh with that being said i love what papa got going on he's gonna i think basically help those in need that can't really go look for information this is just like going to be in one place for you man this is great um we're all here to help and support so um I guess with that being said, I guess let's go ahead and I guess you can go ahead and kick it off, Papa, because I feel like that's the main thing we, I wanted to let everyone know is security. And yeah, security is super important. And, you know, let me retrace exactly the history as I, as far as I've seen it in this community for the last three years before it was a proto community. Um, I think that it was really interesting when, when, when Richard Hart started talking about, um, you know, uh, let's kick this thing off with Hex. There was a, a bit of a, 
miscommunication. And that was, uh, you know, people asked him, uh, how, how can I onboard people? And he said, well, you know what, for most people, MetaMask is fine. And what he was speaking about was, you know, a, a snapshot in time before there were a lot of these gnarly exploits like Mars Dealer, like we just talked about. Um, but still, the best practices at the time were to use a harbor wallet. So I was preaching this from the get-go, and people were pointing at Richard saying, oh, he, he told us that uh, MetaMask is just fine. Well, what I foresaw was a time where if you're time-locking your assets, that you wouldn't be able to move them from that seed. And that seed was generated from a, a web browser extension known as MetaMask, and that itself is only a 12-word seed. And like I said, it's got questionable security. And not only that, but people were wandering all over the place using any number of, of soft wallets. And soft wallets just are strictly not, simply not good enough today, you know? Um, and as we've seen, hardware wallets and the manufacturers that we trust, we know and love, like, like Ledger and uh, Trezor, even Ledger can fall from grace because they can adopt a new philosophy uh, that we may not agree with in terms of, uh, suddenly being able to take your seeds uh, off of the device and shard them up and send them to three different companies for, for your safety because you can't be trusted with, with your own seed management because you're an absolute idiot and you can't, you can't do it yourself. Well, the call still remains in the next update, whether or not you opt in or not. So things evolve in security, right? And we're never married to one particular philosophy we take what we can. We do our absolute best at the time. We notch it all the way up to the best security posture we know how. But if anybody deviates from that or trends change or a new zero day attack occurs, we got to pivot as an entire you know community. Well, how do we do that? And now that comes to the reason that I wanted to do this project. Before, it was simply by word of mouth. And when you look at the chat, there's there's different attendees. You got your di different clicks and different cloisters of people that attend these chats. You can see them talking amongst themselves. Hey, I just got this stuff that like, got, got dropped in my wallet. It says it's worth like 1500 bucks. I'd like to I'd like to sell it. Can I, you know, interact with this token? And you see somebody else in the chat saying, totally random person saying, "Yeah, okay." So that's where they're getting their information. And that would that would be kind of reckless information. What about good information? Like, "Hey, did um did did uh, this so and so person that I trust in the community that knows the security sign off on this token? Did he say it's okay? And then again, you get a yeah, he did. Okay, and you watch another stream, and they say, hey, did David did David Feeder or Crypto Coffee sign off on this one? Uh, yeah, I think so. Uh, yeah, yeah, he did. So you're getting multiple strands of information and multiple second, third parties reporting back in to give you advice as to what is good and bad security. So I said, enough is enough. It's time that we get the brightest and best security practitioners that we have to offer in this community and give them a platform on which to post their opinions.